The industry attitude to health and safety has been one of uh, positive uh, encouragement uh, for many years. The Step Change in Safety initiative is very much at the heart of what uh, this industry is endeavouring to do and has been in place since 1997. Uh, and during uh, the, that uh, last decade or so, the industry has worked incredibly hard to uh, reduce the number of dangerous occurrences, reduce the number of incidents, uh, and has been very successful in that. Nevertheless, there is still always more to do, uh, and this is not a complacent industry, and we've recognised that uh, uh, there is always uh, attention required to managing asset integrity, managing hydrocarbon releases, uh, ensuring those reduce, as well as reducing the number of incidents and accidents to people who work offshore. The industry performance has, has uh, improved uh, over the years. However, in certain areas, we do know that, uh, for example, with hydrocarbon releases, the industry has been flatlining for the last few years. The numbers came down quite significantly from the early 90s to a flatline of around sort of 70, 75 incidents a year. And we've recognised that we need to get off this particular plateau and, and Step Change leadership team have made a commitment very recently to take action to reduce the numbers of hydrocarbon releases by 50% uh, over the next two and a half years. To improve health and safety performance uh, requires sharing and learning uh, between companies. Uh, learning from uh, issues that have arisen, accidents that have occurred on other installations, sharing that information, sharing the underlying causes of these incidents uh, is absolutely fundamental to learning and improving uh, and ensuring that uh, the, the type of incidents that have occurred in the past do not occur again. There are many barriers uh, on offshore installations that prevent hydrocarbon releases uh, and indeed there are many barriers there that, that also uh, help to reduce the potential for a serious incident should a release occur. Now these, these barriers are essentially the, the safety critical parts uh, of the offshore installation. Uh, and uh, of course these need to be maintained in a condition which is fit for purpose but there are additional checks carried out by the independent verification bodies to, who, who uh, ensure uh, that uh, these uh, items of equipment, the, the fire detection systems, the deluge systems and so on, remain fit for purpose and are capable of actually doing what they're supposed to do. I see a very constructive dialogue, constructive engagement with the workforce on a whole range of uh, issues in particular relating to safety uh, and that is of course invaluable to the industry to, to get that feedback from the eyes and ears who are at the sharp end of uh, working on offshore installations so that uh, you know, we can anticipate issues and deal with them as they come along. We've all recognised for many years that uh, we, we have an ageing infrastructure and yet uh, we do see uh, a good long life, uh, future life for the North Sea, uh, extending another 30 or 40 years. Uh, and so we need to make sure that the existing infrastructure remains fit for purpose uh, for the foreseeable future. This industry has been looking at ageing issues for some time and so we welcome the uh, initiative that is being taken by uh, the Health and Safety Executive uh, and we look forward to working with them uh, to ensure that we identify uh, the best practices and, and share those uh, around our member companies. If the offshore industry is compared with say the general manufacturing side uh, or retail or, the, or even the public sector, uh, our accident statistics are better uh, in terms of lost time, injury, incidents and so on uh, than all those other sectors. So we're very proud of the fact that uh, we've achieved this. We all remember the tragic accident that happened on the 1st of April 2009 when 16 men lost their lives in, uh, in a helicopter crash in the North Sea. Following that incident, uh, the industry set up a task group uh, 
a whole range of issues were covered by that task group to try and uh, learn lessons and share uh, lessons arising from that incident. Uh, the task group also helped to expedite progress with a number of projects which uh, had been ongoing to improve health and safety in, in helicopter uh, in the North Sea. And indeed, quite recently, we've seen uh, the, the multilateration system, uh, which is a flight following system, which has enabled us for the very first time uh, to follow helicopters all the way to installations, which does enable us to identify if, if a helicopter gets into difficulties very, very quickly. In addition, uh, we've also improved the uh, VHF uh, arrangements around the North Sea, which uh, has, has improved communications for pilots uh, as well. We have now set up within the Step Change Initiative uh, a helicopter safety steering group uh, to continue the work that, that's been done. Uh, that group uh, benefits from the engagement of uh, workforce representatives, from safety representatives, from the trades unions, uh, the regulatory authorities, as well as uh, operators, uh, and uh, is there to uh, drive the future initiatives. And some of the, some of the ones on which we're working in, in particular would be uh, further enhancement of helideck lighting, particularly the, uh, the circle and H in the center of the helideck. Uh, we have a project uh, that's nearing completion now. We're also uh, working on improving meteorological forecasting uh, throughout the North Sea. That that's involves uh, putting additional meteorological stations on certain installations, enhanced training for uh, helideck landing officers and, and, and people who will be speaking directly to uh, uh, helicopter pilots. Uh, all, to, all with a view of uh, improving uh, safety.